Stress and inflammation drive insulin resistance. Cortisol, epinephrine, and cytokines are the culprits. Dr. Ben Bickman. Here we have that same paradigm that I presented just a moment ago. Now let's superimpose on this paradigm specific cells. I strongly contend that insulin resistance starts in our fat cells. So the fat cell is the first tissue to fall. And so the fat cell being insulin resistant is really what's um, going on in this first phase of this progression. And then when we start to see the changes in glucose, this is likely occurring once the insulin resistance is ha has, has progressed or spilled into three other tissues, muscle, liver, and pancreatic alpha cells. And I'll go into more detail there. The causes of insulin resistance, I, 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 can, I believe there are three primary causes. One is chronically elevated insulin itself as a cause of insulin resistance. Second is stress, elevated, chronically elevated stress, or even acutely, and then acute or chronic inflammation. Stress is, of course, a state that is typified by these prototypical, these two prototypical stress hormones, cortisol and epinephrine. These are both known um, hormones to stimulate or, or to increase blood glucose levels. Because they are trying to push glucose up, they are accurately referred to as insulin antagonists because insulin is trying to push it down. As these two stress hormones continue to push up, um, provide an upward pressure on the glucose levels, it just means insulin has to work harder and harder. Insulin resistance, in other words. Now, in the case of inflammation, when the body experiences higher than normal levels of cytokines, it doesn't have to reach a level of sepsis. They also create an insulin resistant state. This is something that happens very acutely. And so insulin sensitivity starts to go down. And now we're, of course, moving ever closer towards full on insulin resistance and diabetes. Now, with regards to the inflammation, I just wanted to highlight some of the primary inputs there. We have other environmental um, things, uh, stimuli, like diesel exhaust particles and cigarette smoke. Um, and then we have endogenous stimuli, like autoimmune disorders, for example. Um, all of these are known to increase inflammation, which is then known to compromise insulin sensitivity. Now, to what I consider the biggest of these three variables, hyperinsulinemia. This might seem a little strange, but chronically elevated insulin results in a steady reduction in insulin sensitivity. I believe this represents what is actually a fundamental biological principle, namely that any incessant stimulus to a cell will result in a resistance to that stimulus, whether it is a hormone like insulin, and there are other examples, or whether it is a drug, or whether it is something like an antibiotic, the cells that are exposed to this stimulus become resistant to the stimulus. I strongly contend that hyperinsulinemia is one of them. Stress and inflammation drive insulin resistance. Cortisol, epinephrine, and cytokines are the culprits. Dr. Ben Bickman. I strongly contend that insulin resistance starts in our fat cells. Phase one, the fat cell is insulin resistant. When glucose is measured as too high, insulin resistance has spilled into the pancreas, the liver, and our muscles. There are three primary causes of insulin resistance. Chronically elevated insulin, high stress, and inflammation. Stress is driven by two hormones, cortisol and epinephrine. Dr. Bickman says, both stimulate glucose levels to increase. They are called insulin antagonists. As these insulin antagonists push up on glucose, insulin works harder and harder to push down. This is insulin resistance. When the body experiences high levels of cytokines, it doesn't have to become sepsis. Dr. Bickman says, they also create an insulin resistant state. It happens very acutely. Insulin sensitivity goes down. Now we are close to diabetes. Inflammation can be caused by environmental conditions, diesel exhaust, cigarette smoke, 
and by endogenous conditions, such as autoimmune disorders. The biggest of the three variables driving insulin resistance is hyperinsulinemia. Dr. Bickman says, it's chronically elevated insulin results in steady reduction in insulin sensitivity. He believes that this is a fundamental biological principle. Any incessant stimulus to a cell will result in insulin resistance to that stimulus. It could be a hormone, could be a drug, it could be an antibiotic, and it could be hyperinsulinemia. Dr. Bickman believes that hyperinsulinemia is one of these. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. To access these annotations, go to doctorstotrust.com or see the description below this video's title.